if you could take one shot of Novak's game oh. and add it to your game, what would it be? Let me guess. Let me no, guess. No, no. I want that return to serve. <laughs> Give me that return to serve. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tim Henman, and I'm joined today by two of the most successful players in the history of tennis and the NITO ATP Finals, Novak Djokovic and Pete Sampras. To both of you, Pete, if you could take one shot of Novak's game oh. and add it to your game, what would it be? Let me guess. Let me no, guess. No, no. I want that return to serve. <laughs> give me that return to serve. <laughs> Everyone asks who would give me a hard time if I was playing today. There would be Novak because of, of his return. You know, with Andre, I could always get a buy him. If I was picking my spots with Novak, it would be tough to get by him because of his stretch. So I would take Novak's uh, return. Good answer. And, and I would take some of his speed. I wouldn't mind some of that no, speed. One thing, you don't get greedy. <laughs> I wouldn't mind exchanging uh, the, my return and speed for your serve and volley game. I think I would... I would you know, I would take that. I would take your serve and volley against my, my return and speed. Let's, you know, it would be lovely to experience uh, that kind that's, of matchup. <laughs> that's a good trade. I think that's a good trade from both sides. <laughs> to take a step back, obviously, when you're growing up, you're aware of, of players and tournaments. When were you first aware of the ATP finals? It's probably about the time when Pete was playing in the finals. You know, I was, I was following uh, Pete thoroughly, obviously. I've, I've said it many times, you know, I was looking up to Pete and, he's, you know, definitely my, my role model and idol in, in tennis and, you know, trying to... I, 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 I cannot say I was copying Pete because my game is probably <laughs> completely different from his, but, um, but I just love the way he, uh, he just dealt with, with pressure and just played his best when he needed it the most and just uh, always found the first serve and always held his nerves. You know, those five titles, where do they line up against some of your other um, amazing achievements in the game? Well, it's right up there. Um, having, having played it a number of times, uh, to have won it five times is a great achievement uh, to be the best. And, uh, and Novak as well, winning it five times, it's, uh, it's pretty special. Next to slams, obviously, the World Tour Finals uh, uh, is probably the biggest event that we have in our sport. It's probably the ultimate, I think, challenge in a season facing, you know, the top eight guys in a year. I've been fortunate to, to experience uh, the World Tour Finals quite, uh, quite a few times in the last, uh, you know, 10, 15 years. Uh, back in 2008 uh, was my first win in Shanghai. And that was very special, obviously, that skyrocketed kind of my confidence and, and you know, allowed me to believe that I, that I belong, um, you know, uh, at the top of the men's game with all these guys. I've certainly been at the O2 and seen some of your amazing matches there, the matches that you've won. Is there any uh, in particular that really stand out to you? Winning against Roger um, in, a, in a two very close set. In 2012, with a back and down the line, passing shot and a match point, uh, that, was, uh, that was definitely one of the best shots under, under, um, under such occasion for me to hit. So that's probably the one that I would remember the most. 2015 beating Federer three and four wasn't bad as well. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, I've been fortunate to win all of my finals in straight sets. I've been trying to pick one, but uh, <laughs> you know, I, I guess the one against Roger in 2012 would, would probably stand out. Pete, again, your rivalry um, with Boris Becker and, and reflecting on ATP finals for 10 years in Germany, was there a sort of an intimidation factor playing Boris in Germany in front of his home crowd? Uh, well, it was very challenging because, as you know, Boris um, played well indoor. He had a Big game, big serve. He was a very imposing figure on the court. You know, Boris is a, is a big guy. And having his German fans behind him, he, it was tough. There's no doubt that uh, you're playing not only a great player, you're dealing with the fans. Did you feel that your personality, because your concentration was so good, that was ideal in that environment? Yeah, I think it helped. I think just being calm and just playing and um, knowing the situation. I know I'm playing, obviously a great player and playing against all his fans. It was definitely 
a little bit stressful. My rivalry with Boris, especially that handover final, I think, you know, we're both playing great at the same time on a fast court. Uh, it, was, it was two heavyweights and, um, you know, that crowd was loud but fair. And when we talk about year-end number one, um, Pete, you obviously made, uh, finished number one six years in a row. And I remember in 1998, that was, uh, yeah, you're shaking your head already. Can you just give us a little bit of insight into what went on and the stresses and strains that went with that? Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't fun. You know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I mean, you saw me over there. I, was, uh, I took a walk around and I, I believe Vienna. I spent an extra few weeks in Europe. I had one chance to break this record, this all-time record of six years in a row. And I was like, all right, if I'm going to have to be over here for another three, four weeks, I'll do it. And, and I did it. And, and it felt great. But it definitely took a lot out of me emotionally, just, you know, even, even the next few years, you know, that years of number one and staying on top of the game year after year after year, as Novak understands, it's very hard to stay number one. Um, and to do it six years in a row was, for me in my career, I look back at that and I've won a lot of majors and I've done some great things, but staying number one all those years, I think was my biggest achievement, just, just to be dominant. And to, to not just stay number one for six months or a year, but to really, really cement that, I think. Own um, it. Own it. Uh, Novak, I know you're, you're, I think this year is your sixth year, right? Yes. And congratulations. I think uh, you got all my Thank respect you. for being the best in the world for six years. It's, as you know, it's very difficult. It's, it's hard to You know to how stay. that feels, Pete. Yeah, it's, it's hard to stay number one. <laughs> but, you know, it really is one thing to get there is twice as hard to stay there. You know, as, as Pete was mentioning, it, it's, it's a paramount uh, achievement and the amount of dedication that you need to uh, undergo in your life uh, and, and the way you have to organize yourself, not just on the court but off the court, is, is tremendous. I understand when Pete is actually talking about uh, not sleeping well, not eating well, having a funny stomach and, and just, uh, uh, you know, maybe a little bit more difficult relationship with your people who are surrounding you and just like, you know, sometimes being uh, uh, unbearing to yourself as well, you know, with, with the amount of, uh, you know, uh, nervousness, stress, butterflies, whatever you want to call them, all the positive, negative emotions, all that tornado that is happening inside. And, and you care so much about it. Six years in a row, I really, you know, I, I don't know how you did it, Pete, but um, huge, huge respect for that. So, boys, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, that has been an absolute pleasure. Uh, Novak, really look forward to seeing you at the NITO ATP Finals in London. And... Pete, always a pleasure to catch up and uh, take care. All the best to your family. Nice seeing all you again, Pete. Good to see you. All the best.